Hey, ¿cómo están? Hey guys, welcome. Give me just a second. Um, pop, 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 pop. So yes, yeah, some background music. Oh, whoa, whoa. That's better. Hey, Average Tima. <laughs> How are you? Uh, let me load uh, the mesh that I've been working with Jose. Give me a second. Um, it's a little heavy right now. But here it is. So. Okay. Yep. So I guess this is the latest model. Hey Renzo. ¿Qué onda? Bienvenido. Uh, pa, 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 pa. Okay, um hey Will. So this is a collaboration between Jose Rosales and I. Right here, you can see on the bottom right corner a, a drawing of a little man in red and blue. Give me a second. Here. So the red parts are the ones I'm meant to be creating for this character. This has been like a collaboration. I mean, for example, I've been doing like the arms, the shoulders, the jaw, and the belly right here. And Jose did the skull, the upper part of the head, the chest, and he's also doing the legs. So we are creating like character between the two of us. And hopefully this will be like my final stream on this character uh, i'm not sure if jose wants to keep working on his part of, of the model but so far as as i go i find it pretty finished I and mean, it's a pretty interesting design and that's the idea of the stream working on a on the same character it's called uh, this technique exquisite cadaver and that's the idea of working several parts of the same character between two or more artists. So I think I'm going to start adding details to the arms. Uh, first of all, I'm going to save this because it tends to crash a lot of times. ¿Qué onda? Pues el... para los que no conozcan el stream Den un momento Esto va a ser colaboración entre José y yo Trabajamos diferentes partes del cuerpo Ya está casi terminado De hecho solo voy a agregar detalles Y... Pasaremos a lo siguiente Dejen nada más guardo la escena Okay. So I'm going to start but I'm by isolating, leaving just the arm. I'm going to try to keep the same like style that Jose did right here on the chest. Or what I suppose it's actually the chest, I'm I'm not certain. Uh, I'm going to try to keep the same style. Hey Edwin, ¿qué onda, bro? So, on the latest, uh, on my last stream regarding this collaboration, I apparently did a zero measure. I didn't remember that. So now I have subdivision levels 
for the arms, which is super useful. Because now I can start adding details. I'm going to add another subdivision. Right now I have um, four. So it's pretty good. Um, So I'm going to start using again damn standard at the brush. This is one of my favorite brushes. So I use it all the time. From the very beginning when I'm just sketching and not certain of what I'm doing to, f to the final piece by adding details and minor wrinkles and stuff like that. So it's supposed to be like an aquatic, I guess, kind of alien. Uh, para aquellos que apenas se van uniendo al stream, este es un modelo que es colaboración entre José y yo. Ahorita ya lo único que voy a hacer es empezar a agregar detalles. Voy a seguir el mismo estilo de José. José no, no le agregó tanto, tanto detalle de, al punto de llegar a poros. Entonces se vería un poco extraño si los brazos tienen tanto detalle y las piernas, ¿no? Entonces lo voy a dejar como al mismo nivel. Hey, Daniel, ¿qué onda, bro? Ah, perfecto, Edwin. Se aprecia el saludo. El personaje, este es el personaje, es el que he estado trabajando, creo que ya llevamos como unos cuatro streams trabajando en este personaje, este yo creo que va a ser el último, ya está casi terminado. Que un busco material que sea mucho mejor. Ese es el personaje que estaba trabajando. ¿Qué anda a ver con todos? Ya que salga el player o no, no sé muy que no juego, de hecho. So I'm just gonna keep adding those wrinkles and like weird shapes. If you remember from like my first uh, stream with this character, all these shapes were like happy accidents. So uh, I'm making use again of them. I mean, since I already have them, I'm going to follow the same shapes and start adding weird looking wrinkles. And mainly I'm using just damn standard and smooth. Now this is one of the things that I really like to do. For example,
Ah, segurito, segurísimo llegas, Daniel. Es nada más cosa de estar practicando. Ah, pues sí, que se abre mañana. Si sí, no, en el peor de los casos, pues ya el, el fin de semana. Hey, Ernesto, saludo hasta allá, Honduras. Este es un pequeño truco que suelo hacer cuando quiero resaltar las cosas. Por ejemplo, aquí tengo esta arruga, pero quiero que se note un poco más. Entonces lo que hago es, alrededor de la, del límite de la arruga, con Dan Standard, y pongo Alt. Puedo remarcar un poco más y agregarle como efectitos raros, como un poco más orgánico. So I'm just using time standard to make those wrinkles a little more exaggerated by, go, by going to the like to the edge of the wrinkle and then pressing Alt with time standard. That way, the, the cavities look more exaggerated. Hey, Adrian. ¿Qué onda, bro? ¿Cómo estás? Hey, David. Um... David pregunta, ¿es cierto que se modela según si va a ser para renders, juegos, animación? Sí, o sea, ahorita lo que estoy haciendo en ZBrush, eso no importa al final cómo se va a ver. Lo que importa es la topología final. Y la topología cambia dependiendo de si va a ser para videojuegos, si es para cine o televisión. O incluso si es solo para impresión. Porque para, imp para impresión ya la topología no importa. Pero sí, va cambiando al final como el, el uso que le vayas a dar, como videojuegos tienen cierto límite de polígonos, y en cambio para real para render, ya sea cine o, o beauty renders, lo que vas a hacer es subdividir el modelo, entonces agregar más detalle, tienes que tener como tu topología con la mente de, de que se va a subdividir. En cambio en videojuegos puedes usar triángulos. So, um, David was asking me if the topology changes, the changing, changes <laughs> depending on if it's going to be for video games, movies, or for um, like just um, renders. So mainly, I mean, the sculpture is not going to change, but the final topology depends completely on the final um, output of the. Uh, the final render if it's going to be like real time for video games or uh, virtual reality and anything like that the topology depends completely on how many polygons you have and for things like movies or ads tv shows the topology at the end is going to be subdivided to get more resolution so ne you need to think on the topology by um, not using triangles, keeping all in quads. Hey Camilo, ¿qué onda Hugo? Ah, no sería más fácil que tú lo detallaras y después por último José lo detalle, que en el mismo nivel los dos. Sí, de hecho... Creo que José todavía va a hacer un string más. Entonces lo que voy a hacer es voy a agregarle detalles a esto. No sé qué tanto nivel voy a llegar. Porque también me gusta que esté un poco limpio. Pero, pero sí le voy a empezar a agregar más detalles de lo que tiene José. Tienes muchas razones. Um, ah, no. Pues sí que lo respondo en, en los dos. <risa> porque hay... hay... Hay tanto en español como en inglés ahorita en el chat. Tanto en YouTube como en Facebook y en Twitch. Um, Arcontos pregunta sobre la cantidad de polis. Dependiendo de si es para videojuegos o para VR o para VFX. 
Y o sea, en cuanto a cantidad de polígonos, no, no hay como un límite, o sea, no, no hay como una regla que te ponga el límite establecido. Va a depender completamente del, del engine donde lo vas a poner, por ejemplo, por el caso de videojuegos. Para mobile, obviamente es donde menos polígonos te, tienes. Para lo que es rendereado, no es necesario que hagas un mesh tan pesado. Sin embargo, al final, como vas a, a subdividir todo eso, tienes más libertad en cuanto a polígonos. O sea, el chiste es tampoco llegar con un mesh simplemente decimado. Y, porque la topología en animación o en VFX depende completamente de la deformación. Es decir, si este va a ser el codo, tiene que tener un loop para que pueda doblar, doblarse bien. Porque en el caso de videojuegos no es tan importante porque lo vas a ver igual y de lejos o no va a tener tanta animación con tanto detalle de deformación y de los músculos. Pero en cambio para VFX, sí, entonces tienes que considerar que se va a subdividir eso y cuando se subdivida, um, tienes que hacer la prueba de si se ve bien o no. Digamos que el low poly que estás modelando para, para VFX, ese low poly no va a ser el final que se va a renderear, sino va a ser la base en la que se va a subdividir y luego se renderea. Sí, o sea, en cuanto a números, no, o sea, no los tengo como a la mano, depende con mucho proyecto. Sí, so, I was just... Um... So I was just explaining um, regarding like, um, the quantity of polygons. There isn't like a like a written bo uh, rule of how many polygons you need for each case. For example, video games, mobile, VR. It depends completely on the engine, or in case of, in the case of render. Um, Qual quantity of polygons is not as important as the quality of of the topology because it all depends on how it's it's going to be deformed at the end. And I'm right now I'm just trying to follow the same flow that I did before, like with those happy accidents. I'm trying to add, add like a very organic look to it, but also trying to keep the same style that Jose did before. For example, right here I have like those crevices and wrinkles weird looking like fish um, fish parts. Because it's meant to be like an aquatic alien, something like that. But at least that's the look we are looking for. Ah, perfecto, Adrián. Pues cualquier cosa aquí andamos. Qué bueno que te das una vuelta. Um, ¿Has visto tus personajes en películas o videojuegos? En eh, películas no todavía. En videojuegos sí, pero esperemos que pronto en alguna película. Los he visto en televisión, pero no, no en la pantalla, en la pantalla grande. Hey Chu. <ríe> six, 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 six. So right now I have like four subdivision levels. Maybe I'll do one more to add look like the pores and like very fine details. But that's going to be like the final stage of this. I'm going to try to nail the same appearance appearance for for the torso for the belly. 
And right now, the, the only brush I'm using is Game Standard. <laughs> a more. It's a fake red, red clay, red wax. But do you have now two different red waxes? This one, it's not um, as powerful as the other one. But it does help for, for wrinkles. So powerful. <laughs> Sigo en Dynamesh? No. Este, le hice un Zero Mesh. Creo que en el stream anterior, porque la verdad no me acuerdo. Le hice un Zero Measure y ya tengo una topología como más... No es perfecta, pero está más, mucho más limpia. Um, entonces podemos tirarnos a detallar, así como así luego un Ray Topology y proyectar, trabajar la cantidad de polígonos. Sí. A mí me gusta usualmente cuando son proyectos así de Ray Topology, me gusta definir las formas, agregar un poco de detalles y luego me pongo a... Una vez que ya tengo el Ray Topology, me regreso a ZBrush y le agrego como los detalles más pequeños. Pero también puedes agregarle los, los detalles desde el principio y no, no hay ningún problema. The Almighty Red Wax. I mean, it does look really good with all these like wrinkles. Um, todavía no estoy en la etapa de micro detailing, pero yo creo que igual y si sí llego hoy. Es que lo que pasa es que no estoy seguro si se lo quiero agregar por el look del personaje. Igual y unas bases nada más, pero no quiero atascarlo demasiado. Um, do you rather a crease brush over an inverted draw style brush? Um, what do you mean by Do you rather a crease brush? I'm sorry, mate. Uh, what do you mean, like, a uh, crease brush over an inverted draw style brush? Will? So even though it's not supposed to be like a final um, mesh, this is probably never going to be retopologized it's just going to be like a for a beauty beauty render maybe a concept art um i try to at least like in the middle of the process of modeling create a, a new mesh with zero measure that way i'm able to subdivide without like having dynamic and having a super heavy mesh Oh, uh, you mean for making wrinkles? Uh, well, there are two ways that I tend to do like wrinkles. For example, for this like fin looking thing, what I would actually do first is by using dam standard. I'll just draw. And after that, like over the edge, I'll use like the inverted um, dam standard to make it a little more exaggerated, to be more visible. And the other way is by using pinch. For example, I think in this part, pinch and inflate is going to be like super useful. For example, I'm going to use inflate. Now first I'm going to use pinch. I, I still need them to be a like little closer together. What it's going to do is like, get 
those two crevices as close as possible and then I'm going to use inflate and there you have it it does look like more um, natural because when actually it's um, it's folding like a real wrinkle it's not fake like using them standard that you're lost you're just um, carving right here there are two parts merging together and one over the other <laughs> tricky to create your artist <laughs> only trees of the rest will hate you uh, <laughs> oh, that's a tough one especially because I tend to forget the names I mean I do have like a big library on Instagram and ArtStation and what's the other one that I've been using um, CG Society and Pinterest of different creature designers Right now, um, I can think of Martin Verhoeven, um, Jordu Schell, or Schnell, and what else? Who else? I'm probably like forgetting a ton of them. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Oh man, I, <laughs> I can't even remember three of them. Um, I think I'm going to butcher his name, Arthur Willis, or let me check because I'm certainly not sure. I'm gonna cheat and check my collection of creatures in our station. Oh, Stephen Oakley. That's another one that I really f follow. And the one I was saying... <laughs> oh, of course! <laughs> uh, that's a trap. <laughs> Ashley, Ashley Williams. <laughs> please don't tell them. <laughs> well, please tell Jose. <laughs> Jose was on purpose. I mean, there's plenty of, of creature designers. Like, li literally, my collection on Art Station of creatures, it's like super, super big. I'm actually thinking in dividing the, the, that collection into several, like, subcategories. So, for example, uh, I don't know, humanoid looking creatures or um, quadrupeds or insect looking because. The collection is already too big. <laughs> it was a trap. I felt I fell completely. <laughs> ¿Qué onda, Ramiro? Ah, uh, of course. Um, David's remi reminding me of Adam Sims. It was a tricky question. I mean, there's a ton of them, and choosing only three is really hard. I was able to meet um, Adam. Like, I, I was gonna say last year, but it was actually this year, on his studio. And right now there's a contest um, that the guys of Adam Sims, from the guys of Adam Sims, you have to redesign um, the, the monsters from the last movie um, Rampage, Rampage. So you have to like redesign either the crocodile, I think it's called DC or Lizzy, Lizzy, I think, the wolf. I don't remember the name of the wolf. Joe, I'm going to call him. And the ape, which I can't seem to remember. Ah, George. I think it's called George. So the idea is to like redesign those creatures, 
and the winner is going to take like it's going to win uh, a spot on the under masterclass. I won the last contest, so that's why I was able to visit the studio and stay there for a weekend. So if you have an Instagram account and you do like to like design creatures, I highly recommend that contest. It's really nice. I think it's going to end next week, but it's good to know. I mean, yeah, actually, it's super good. When I I was I was, <laughs> when I was starting to use like to make the streamings for Pixel Logic, I was following her because I really like the way she creates creatures. Plus, it's really fast. I mean. Her streams are like, I don't know, two hours, three, and at the end of the stream, she ends with like a full creature. <laughs> Good one. We all know that, Mord, but we know she's watching, so. Then I was giving here those. So I think I'm going to start working on the back of the bicep. And even though I have like another subdivision, another two subdivision levels, for example, like this, since I don't have that much detail right here on the back, I'm still working on a very low subdivision level because I, I really want to work on those happy accidents. It's the lazy way of designing for me. Really? I, I didn't. I didn't knew that. Uh, I saw. I think she did a stream yesterday or like this week. I remember seeing her. Uh, maybe it was last week. I mean, she's been streaming like for the very beginning, I think. So taking a break is completely understandable. So right now, what I'm going to do is the same stuff of inflate. For example, I have like these crevices right here, and I want them to be like closer together. So just by using inflate, it creates, creates a better looking wrinkle right here. And I can just start using that wrinkle to create more interesting shapes. Ya ves, Miguel, mejor si brush. Oh, man, I didn't knew. I was just like watching a little bit of her stream, but I didn't know it was like the last for a, for a month, I think you said.
so sad. Hey Diego, thanks mate. Glad you like it. Um, right now, this is like the collaboration stream between Jose and I. So we're work working on this character, the one on the left. And yep, I'm working on the arms. You can see right here on the bottom right corner, like a little guy in red and blue. It's supposed to be like an example of how we divided the character. So I'm doing the arms and the belly and the jaw and neck. So all the red parts are mine, just like red wax. And the blue boring ones are from Jose. Like, um, everything is okay with her? Or is it just like a, like a personal break? Like a break for personal reasons or just to have like a rest from streaming? So for example, right here, I do have like this line going right here that is meant to be like this protective layer that, I don't know, this muscle has. And right here I have like this line that I didn't create it on purpose. However, what I'm going to do is exaggerate a little more that line and then connect them. Those are the type of happy accidents that I love. Makes me look like I'm trying to, like I already have everything planned. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's really hard sometimes to be like streaming and having a lot of jobs. A lot of work. So what I love about using them standard is it's mainly like drawing. So I can start like adding and defining some veins and weird looking shapes just by using them standard. Haven't used any, well I used pinch and inflate before but not that much. Oh, really? <laughs> Thanks for the heads up. Now I need to look for it. Looking for that feature. Uh. <laughs> ah, perfecto. On the leg holes. Oh, up, 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 up. Oh, I see it. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> now I have to find, uh, I need to like hit an, an Easter egg. Gotta think what. Oh, I know what. Like, I'm, I'm gonna leave it to the end. <laughs> yeah, right here. Sure, what I'm going to do is that's cool. Uh, 
of lasso. Sometimes I start working with the mouse instead of the pen. And I don't realize why. Well, I don't know why. Oh, I didn't have symmetry on. And we are going to assign red wax to this part. Let's give it a try. Ah, oh, there it is. Perfect. Marvelous. Yep. <laughs> Hey Arturo, ¿qué onda? Eso parece la piel de mi perro. <laughs> Pobre de tu perro. <laughs> ¿Tiene alguna enfermedad o algo así tu perro? O es de esos perros que no tienen piel, digo, no tienen pelaje. Hey, thanks. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, I do not know how to pronounce your name uh, or how to read it. I tried to use Google, Google Translate, but <laughs> apparently it didn't work. And I'm gonna walk back to Red Wax. I owe you a beer, Mordekainer. Are you going to go to like, um, are you going to assist um, the summit this year? Ah, estuviste viendo el podcast del robot? I'm your station. Ah, gracias, bro. Sí, ya es el segundo episodio. Entonces, ahí va. La verdad es que la entrevista estuvo muy buena, pero está muy larga. Eso que la edité, pero fueron casi... Dos horas, son, son como hora y cincuenta y cuatro la entrevista. Para aquellos que no sepan, uh, bueno, le pondré el link al final, pero estoy con unos amigos haciendo un podcast relacionado con la industria y ayer liberamos el segundo episodio y es una entrevista con Juan García, que es mejor conocido como el robot. Sí, la versión de ArtStation Pro es para es lo único que tiene la, la, la función de blogs, solo la tiene ArtStation Pro. Oh man, yeah, I know, but it's totally worth it. If you assist, if you decide to assist, uh, tell me and I'll buy you a beer because <laughs> of the excellent idea you had of making all, all of Jose's soup tools with red wax. He really appreciated that. <laughs> and for telling me about the fidget, fidget spinner. Sí, que anda con la piel del perro. Sí, es como para checarlo porque está muy, muy bizarro eso. 
<laughs> oh, I will. <laughs> So someone in the chat is telling me that uh, this does look like the, the skin of her dog. So I guess it's a very sick dog. It doesn't look like a very healthy skin. I don't know. I mean, I suppose I suppose it's like one of those hairless dogs. Otherwise, it's gonna be like super creepy having a dog with this type of skin. Sale Edwin, nos vemos, bro. Ahí me dices que te parece el podcast. Oh, I completely forgot to save. And that's super important. several parts without enough resolution right here for example so I guess I'll have to subdivide later right now I do have like four so I think it's good enough Celer contos si le voy a decir al Mr. K a ver si se arma ya si no mañana aunque sea el fin de semana asumo que no se arma Um, I have a question. When you start modeling a character, how do you do clothes? You make them apart, you make the body of them, of the model with the clothes, or is it not matter? Um, blah, blah, blah. Yep, uh, so when I try to, when I do make clothes, to be honest, I try to make them on Marvelous Designer. It's easier. However, um, first I do have like to create, I, I do need to create the, the base mesh, like, for example, if I'm going to do like a t-shirt, first I need to have like a torso. So I'll create like a base mesh, like a very simple one, depending on how much time I want to invest. If it's going to be like something that, uh, for example, a very tight t-shirt, then I'll have to add a lot of detail. So on the wrinkles you can actually see the muscles and all that but if it's going to be something like a jacket or something uh, not that tight to close to uh, nothing that close to the body then I won't invest that much time so for example when I do have like this and let's say instead of doing it on marvelous designer I want to make them on on ZBrush what I would do is for example have this one and going to change it a little bit. So 
so ba, ba, ba. yep like this so this is supposed to be like the armpits and the chest and all that so oh, give me a second i'm gonna make some arms yeah exactly as more like said uh, what i would do is for example i create a mask of what I want to extract. Uh, for example, like this. So all this is going to be my new like clothes. So I go to Sub tool, extract, and right here on thickness, um, I do select how how thick how thick I want it to be, and I press extract, and it will generate like a preview. It's not going to be like the final mesh on on until you press accept, it's going to be just a preview. So you will be able to play with the thickness. Let's say I want to be like this. So the cool thing is it's actually going to be hollow. And after that, you only need to like start adding details and the wrinkles and all that. But this works pretty fine to, cre for, to create like clothes without using another application like Marvelous. Yeah, and for armor, it's the same process. For example, for a shoulder plate, I will do like the same. Using mask, extract, maybe with a little, a little bit more of thickness. Accept, and that's it. So it's pretty like rough, but it gives the idea of what you were asking, or I hope so. But yeah, just like Mordekainer said, by extracting it's easier to create like a new mesh. And there's another way, for example, it's a little old because it was like using Dynamesh. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this. So right now I do have two models. They're just like overlapping. And one of them is going to have like Siri um, Dynamesh. So let's say around here, except. And then what I would do is, for example, using clay buildup. I'll just start defining like the shapes. So it's also a good, like a quick way of creating like hard surfaces. And after that, uh, I don't know, you can actually redeploy SDs or create a mask and then separate the tube tool and see remesh or there are like plenty of ways. For example, for the shoulder blades, the same thing. So something like this. So it's also a, like a quick way of creating that type of geometry, like armor and clothes and stuff like that. And 
I'm going to start modifying this. I still have a lot of resolution, so I won't won't be needed to like subdivide again. For this, I'm actually using clay to give like that organic looking. I think I'm going to leave this part without that much detail because I do want to have like resting sounds. I mean, for example, right here, all this is like super saturated. The shoulder plate doesn't have like, like way too much detail. However, this part super, super charged with detail. So I want to have like without, with, without, with. I'm going to start working on the hands. So it, right now I have like pretty weird looking hands. So it's like a mixture between maybe an octopus and the hands of, I don't know, like a manatee or something like that. Oops. So 
so right now I'm using like the same workflow that I did for for the wrinkles. Oops. Let me save it. I want some chubby hands on the creature. So it doesn't look like super aggressive. So I'm not going to invest that much time on the hands, to be, to be honest, they're really, really small, so they're not that important. I think I'll just add some more details and after that I'm going to move to the, to the torso, well, actually to the belly. So I'm just trying to use the shapes that I already created. I'm trying to unite those two things. I'm not certain what that is, but. I'm going to start adding the same look to it.
Okay. Oh, I didn't saw the questions. I'm sorry. Um. Oh, it's okay. If if I am F. <laughs> um. A Dundin. Oh, it's okay. I just barely started like an hour ago, so I'm actually working on the character. Uh, it's supposed to be like the final stage. So it's just like adding wrinkles and that type of stuff. I mean, it's mainly finished, at least my part. I'm not certain if Jose is going to like change. A lot of like, for example, the head or the legs. But so far, I think that mainly like 80% done. Hey, Diego, no, no llegas tarde. Todavía ando aquí dándole. Oh, no, it's not a glove. It's uh, actually his hand. Since he's such like, uh, he spends a lot of time in the sea, on the water. So he has like this very like inflated chubby hands <laughs> so the poor creature has some horrible hands but it has like a cool looking armor so I guess that compensates the horrible hands hey you have que onda saludos Um, ¿Cómo puedo hacer en estas partes? Mm. Creo que no entiendo muy bien. O sea, ¿te refieres a cómo hacer esa imagen? Si es cómo hacer la imagen... Puedes usar simplemente máscaras. Creo que es la versión más sencilla. O sea, simplemente puedes... Empezar a hacer máscaras con el patrón que quieras y luego las extract y ya se te va a hacer el, el patrón como tú lo quieres entonces dependiendo del patrón de lo que hagas con la máscara es como te va a sacar tu extract entonces yo lo haría así con una máscara Igual aplicaría para lo de la, el patrón circular. Lo único que haría es igual y ponerle transform y tener una simetría radial. De esa forma lo que haga, por ejemplo, en esta parte. No va a ser perfecta, pero te da la idea. No, aquí. Y digamos que quiero que tenga un patrón extraño. Entonces ya me lo va respetando. Digo eso porque tiene todo el me hecho horrible, pero pero puedes ver los puntos como te va haciendo con el patrón. O igual lo puedo hacer aquí mejor. Y ya con eso tienes como un patrón más interesante y radial. Y ya eso le das extract, bueno lo inviertes, extract Y ya, está como tu patrón, bueno bien hecho obviamente Si, sí, justo como te dice Mordekainer, creo que es mucho más sencillo Literal es solo esculpir la pierna en lugar de estar modificando el, Lo que está alrededor de ella Hey, um, Hatim, all the way to Morocco. Uh, hello from Mexico.
Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't able to uh, like answer before. I was completely distracted by the sculpture and those weird looking hands. Y quizás a esto le agregue como quizás como venas. No, nah, creo que no queda. Y ahora trabajaré en algo que dejé completamente olvidado, que era el, sol, el torso. Yo no tiene tanta resolución. Pero como le hice un zero measure antes, puedo empezar a detallar eso. So I'm just trying to replicate the same pattern that I've been using for the arms. And yep, I also need to work on the back. I mean, final render, it's gonna be probably frontal, so you won't see any of the back, any detail. But anyway, I do want to work on it. Hey, ¿qué onda, bro? Sí, ando justamente metiendo detalles. Ya tenía toda la forma definida, entonces... Lo único que estoy haciendo es definir las formas ya con, con más resolución lo subí una vez y empecé a agregar casi todo el tiempo estoy usando puro dam standard como es una forma muy improvisada realmente no me preocupo porque no se ve exactamente realista estoy tomando como muchas libertades con, con el modelo
Sí. Probablemente subdivido una vez más y lo que empieza es agregar detalles de un poco de textura. Igual y no en todas partes. Me gusta la idea de que tenga como la textura de piel de tiburón, como muy lisa. Pero para las partes que están como muy detalladas. Igual le pongo como una textura más rugosa. Sí, de hecho creo que las partes más pesadas eran las que había hecho José Porque lo he mantenido como bastante limpio En general creo que este está, esta parte está solo en 500 Y los brazos apenas se llegan al millón, 974 mil Creo que la mayor parte de las partes pesadas son las de José Pero bueno, hasta ahora no, no ha crasheado el equipo, afortunadamente. <risa> sí, se emocionó y le empecé a meter detalle a todas partes. Me gustó mucho más este collab que el anterior. Ya se siente un poco más homogéneo todo. Y no como que lo hicieron tres personas o cuatro personas. Cada quien así como, ah, yo hago el brazo, yo a la izquierda. Quizás lo que me da un poco de flojera es hacer la parte de atrás, lo que es la espalda. Ya está casi definido esto. Uh, creo que después de esto igual y... No, la verdad es que esta parte de atrás no. Apenas si sí se ve. Quizás nada más modifique un poco esto. O le agregue unos subtools a, a los hombros y creo que estará terminado el modelo. No le agregaré más detalles como estos.
esta parte le falta demasiado.
Oh, I've been put the mic off. I have no idea how long. <laughs> this happens to me that often that I... I already got used to it. Um, what I'm going to do is... I'm going to finish the back. Not by sculpting more details, but by replicating these like ornaments and baroque stuff on the back. That way I won't have to work all the details of the back from scratch. So I'm just trying to look for an interesting shape. And I'm going to use, right here I saved the base mesh of the Baroque details. Oh, here it is. So I'm going to use it again, one last time. Oops. I always have a lot of issues with the cones in this part. So it's something like this. And goes like this. So I guess I'm just going to replicate again this part. Since I already have like this base mesh that I created of the ornaments, it's way easier just to replicate and change it to at will. And quicker. Split hidden. And I'm gonna keep this one. Hey, titanium, thank you. So, we're almost done with this model. With this weird looking alien.
Oh, and I need to save it because this happens a lot of times that I don't save and everything crashes, especially with this model that it's already a little heavy. Yep. And yeah, I think it's looking good. I mean, decent enough. And I'm going to keep using Snake Hook with Sculptures Pro. All the way down here. And I'm going to make it uh, maybe around the front. Maybe it'll, it will connect right here. Yeah, I think this is working for, for this part. And this is going to be like the last of it. What I'm going to do is just, it's just a zero measure, like really quick for this part that I created with Sculptures Pro. So it doesn't look like super jaggy. Um, zero measure. Do, 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 do. Here it is. Off. I think this is looking good. Slow poly enough. And then I'm going to use Inflate without Sculptures Pro to create like more sick looking. I don't know. Whatever it is, like. Like it looked like a belt. And I'm going to call it done. Yep. Well, we will add some small details right here. Uh, hey, Pitago, uh, it's both. I mean, it's gonna be like, well, it was meant to be like in English. However, there's plenty of Spanish speaking users. So I tend to change between Spanish and English depending on the question and who asked. It's way too strong.
and yep. So let me just go and use a little bit of damn standard to modify a little bit of the shapes here. So it doesn't look like super clean all the time. But I don't want to use any alpha because I don't have enough resolution and I'm not... It's, I don't think it's worth um, subdividing just for this part. Uh, ba -ba. Oh, you can do both ways. Oh, that's perfect. I mean, usually my streams tend to be like that, even though, for example, the next one is going to be like just free sketching, creating a creature or an alien, something like that. And those are meant to be in Spanish. However, at the end, it's going to be like this, like <laughs> changing between English and Spanish all the time. So guys, girls, I'm finishing this character. Uh, we'll see, how are you? It's been a long time. So, this character has been like a collaboration between Jose Rosales and I. I think that at least my part it's done. I don't think I'll be adding any more details. Um, give me a second. Now I, I'm actually going to change something. I'm going to add some small details. Details using some IMM. Oh great. Nice of you to tune in. Oh I've been great. I mean a little busy with work but I think that's good. Besides that um, um, everything's going well thanks. We just going to finish this character. I mean next stream I think it's Jose's turn. I'm not certain if he's going to finish like adding more details. Probably no. I, well, probably he will do a little stream. At the beginning we'll add details to this character and then we'll move on to the next thing. <laughs> yeah, all my all my streams tend to be like in Spa in Spanglish. <laughs> I'm just looking for a cool looking IMM of a hard surface, like a bolt, something like that. Um, so it doesn't look like super clean, those shoulder blades. Oh, currently I'm working on some jewelry design. Like at least for a month, I've been doing a lot of freelance of jewelry, 3D printed jewelry, which I really love. I mean, I never imagined I would work on that, which is really, really fun because you don't need to worry about topology or anything like that. And it's not like, usual tree printing of creating like superheroes and collectibles, which is also cool, but I mean, doing jewelry feels different to see like your final work on something like silver or gold or anything like that. It's a very cool feeling. And I'm just trying to find a cool I'm to use, but <laughs> yeah, Spanglish is like the best type of, of streaming. I mean.
Um, oh my, I can actually find any brush that I like. And I don't really want to go with those like traditional bolts because it's like an alien and it doesn't make any sense to have like bolts, like traditional looking bolts on the armor. So I want something, I mean, not that unique, not super weird, but I don't want like a traditional looking bolt. Oh yeah, it's the perfect time for Wagner. <laughs> Taco. <laughs> Maybe for my next stream I should do like some type of Taco creature. That would be cool. Uh, I can't seem to find any. Let me see if the train IMM will save me. For those of you who don't know, you can actually find more brushes. Like if you press comma on your keyboard and you will have like your lightbox menu. You go to brush and then for example, you can go to insert IMM and here you can find like bricks Dragon I am like the entire dragon skeleton and a train with all of its parts. And no I was No, I couldn't find anything. Anything at all. Oh, I think I'm going to use this one. Let me see how it looks. Yeah, it doesn't look that bad. So, I'm going to use this one. And split hidden. Guessing I'll add another one right here.
just playing with the shapes to find somewhere to include those cylinders. Well, they're not cylinders, like long looking donuts. Two groups, Mirror and World. Yep. way better. And I'm going to delete those. E Boolean. Yeah, it's easier. It's not the same size, but no one will notice. And for this part, what I was thinking instead of using another IMM. I'm going to use the same pattern that I did on the first stream, which is this one. Split hidden. Minimize. Do -do -do -do. Perfect. Now what I want to do is mirror and weld. Mirror, uh -huh. and the same goes to saving this one.
here it is. Yep. So I think I'm going to call it done for tonight. It was a really fun project, this one. Um, thanks to everyone who came by. Uh, probably Jose is going to make another stream of this character. I'm not certain, but I mean, maybe he will do it. Just to add small details to to his parts. Um, yep, besides that, I'll see you next Thursday for my other stream, which, as you know, is going to be in Spanglish. <laughs> And yep. Hey, thanks Mordekainer. Nice to see you here in the stream. Thanks for tuning in. Um, yep. So up here you can find my social media. Uh, give me a second. Like, uh, where is it? Top. Yep. Oh, yep. Right here. Both my Patreon, my Facebook, Instagram, ArtStation, Twitch. Uh, how many time did I spend on this one? Uh, it's really hard to know. I think it was like two or three streams. And each of my streams tends to be like two to three hours. So maybe, I don't know, from six to nine hours. The hard part was like to come up with a design that feels... I mean, since Jose and is working on the blue parts right here on the little guy with red and blue, and I'm no, he's working on the blue parts and I'm working on the red ones. Um, it's really hard to combine with a design that everyone is like happy with, and we both have different styles to to like sculpt and design. But it was a really, really interesting project, and I really had fun with this one. Oh, give me a second. Um, apparently... Oh, there it is. Those last details on the shoulder blades. And... Oh, thanks, thanks for everyone who's fine. Was <laughs> thanks to everyone who was watching the stream. Um, I'll see you next Thursday. Um, in theory, it's, it was suppo it's supposed to be in like next stream on Spanish, but as you know, it tends to be like in Spanglish. So come by to say hi. Uh, probably I'll do a hard surface stuff. I have in mind a robot that I sketch like in 2D a couple of days ago and yep so right here on the top you can see my social media thank you Dundin. Dean uh, Martin thank you um, voy a terminar el stream por hoy realmente el personaje me agradó bastante por donde iba. Creo que ya no le pienso agregar más detalles. Lo considero terminado. Y los veo el próximo jueves. Posiblemente hago un robot el próximo jueves. No sé. Creo que va a depender. Pero es casi 90% seguro que haga un robot. Gracias a todos los que estuvieron aquí en el stream. Nos vemos, bro. Este... Voy a estar sacando un render de este y del anterior stream que fue colaboración. Posiblemente en Keyshot para evitar problemas. Y... Ah, para aquellos que no saben, tengo un podcast con unos amigos que empecé hace unos meses. Y ayer justamente liberamos nuestro segundo episodio. Creo que... ¿Quién la liga? No estoy seguro. Dejen checo. Sí. Entonces, 
Esta es la liga. Bueno, el de arriba es mi Patreon, pero lo de abajo es el podcast. Es completamente en español y es sobre la industria. Estamos entrevistando a Juan García, que es un amigo y es conocido como el robot. Y pues eso es todo. Que tengan buena noche todos. Have a good night, guys. Thank you.